Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihei. We have got another interesting show for you this afternoon. I have as my guest a gentleman that is in charge of one of the most important issues in the United States at the moment once you get past the usual stuff on the news. We have as our guest today John Aieto. And he is the president of the Kalai Moku Group here in Honolulu. And he has just been assigned the job of communicating, really, with uh, Native Hawaiians and all Pacific Islanders in the entire United States. Welcome, John. It's a pleasure to have you this afternoon. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you know, John, tell me a little bit about this contract you have. I am so fascinated with it. Um, you know, what is it that you are trying to get across? What is it that you're trying to do? So the Census Bureau, for the first time, um, created a messaging campaign for the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Group. The Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Group first came on board in 2000 for the first time. For decades, it was Asian American Pacific Islands, and the Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders were lumped into that group. Well, in 2000, through efforts of Senator Akaka and Senator Inouye, it splintered off, and we were able to have our own representation. At first, the, the Native Hawaiian group wanted to be part of the Native American census bucket but the Native Americans pushed back and the Bureau of Indian Affairs basically said that the Native Amer Hawaiians didn't have a treaty with the U.S. government like the tribes did. So that they were the ones that sort of shut the door on us. And then the feds decided, okay, we'll create your own category called Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders. So we went from Asian Pacific Islanders to Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders in 2000. And then in 2020, they decided to have their very own messaging campaign to all the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders in all 50 states. They put out an RFP looking for basically a marketing and advertising firm that had expertise in the Native Hawaiian community. And uh, we applied and we're fortunate enough to get the contract. We've been working on the contract for the last three and a half years. Oh, fantastic. So, but you know, when you say uh, the contract, you, you, you mean you're responsible for the entire United States. I mean, wherever people are going to be counted, you're responsible for making sure that the messaging gets to uh, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. Uh, That's correct. Okay. And what the census did was they have what they call multicultural agencies. So there's an African-American group, there's a Hispanic group, there is an Asian-American group, there's a Native American group, and a Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander group. We're in charge of the messaging to the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander group in all 50 states. Okay, that's, that's, that's fantastic. So what this means then is that um, each group, uh, by the way, before we get there, I like the idea of being a, a, of Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders together. No offense to our Native American brothers across the country, but I think in a way the result was better. I mean that we can be counted uh, in a way separately and uh, along with uh, a more compatible, uh, in terms of historical experience anyway, more compatible groups. I, That's I true. Think. For for my Christmas present, my wife and I both gave each other Ancestry.com and 23DNA, where you spit into the tube and they tell you what your DNA um, community is. And both Amazon.com and 23andMe both came back and said that my Hawaiian ancestry was same as my Samoan ancestry, same as the New Zealand ancestry, there's uh, the DNA is the same, the blood is the same, and a lot of times the experience is the same of being a Pacific Islander. 
Well, that's fantastic because I'm glad you didn't come out and say something like it came back that I was Scandinavian, you know, something like <laughs> that would have been great. So the, past, the purpose of the messaging, though, is to get people to uh, count themselves. I mean, get people to participate in the census. Is that that's right? That's correct. I mean, and, and, yes. And what do you do? I mean, are you hiring different groups? You're talking to, you, you're making presentations? What, what is So the, the, the census is hiring a lot of groups to go door to door. It's a huge effort made up of a lot of community organizations. Yeah. What we did was focus on the messaging side. So what we tried to do was get community leaders or social media influencers to come out and say to the general public, participate in the census. So we went out and had great discussions with, for instance, Dr. John Osorio, who sort of represents the independence community and wants America to leave. In our conversations with Dr. Osorio, he said, listen, John, the two things I always tell my students that they should do is participate in the census and vote. So wow. he came on and became one of our trusted voices uh, and did a PSA. Marcus Mariota, the Heisman Trophy winner, came out and participated as one of our trusted voices. Nainoa Thompson, who also shares the belief that Polynesia is of one people and the Pacific Islanders are of one people. He's so dedicated to the Micronesian community because of his connection to his, his mentor, Mao, and he's traveled throughout the Pacific. So for him, when we started talking about this, he said, John, I want to be a part of this. I want to uh, get our community to participate and activate them. And really, I think this is a two step because not only do we want them to activate them for the census, but we also want to activate them to participate in the elections. So John, Let's... you know, before we, um, we go much further and we will get back to the main topic of, the, uh, of, of our conversation, which is uh, the census and why it is important. And well, first of all, how the messaging is being done and why it is important. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, people may be curious. Um, how, does the, uh, how does one get to be president of the Kalaimoku group? I mean, wh wh <laughs> where, where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? What, what's your background? Uh, okay, well, I'm born and raised in, in uh, Kalihi. I was raised by my Hawaiian grandmother. I was fortunate enough to go to the Kamehameha schools for 13 years uh, and uh, went away to college, came back home. Well, 13 and years because you come in kindergarten, right? I mean, it That's was... correct, kindergarten. <laughs> okay. I didn't flunk. I didn't flunk. <laughs> okay, good. Just, just so, so um, And then what happened I came back, after I, I worked. I worked for KCCN Radio and worked with our good friends, Brickwood Galuteria and Kimo Kahawano, and really got a better understanding of Hawaiian community. I was in the stands of Ko'olako, the year of the Hawaiian that was made possible by you. I cried when the hula dancers danced at Aloha Stadium. And I really wanted to contribute to my state and my community by advancing Native Hawaiian community. Well, you and got so, the chance uh, to do it with this censor right now. Let, you know correct. what we're going to do? If you don't mind, we're going to cut in. We are going to play one of your videos at this time. Thank you. We're going to play it, and then we'll come back and talk about it. So, folks, you awesome. are really in for a treat. Stranger to the door Hide away, they say Cause we don't want your broken parts Learn to be a saint of all my scars Run away, they say No one will love you as you are But won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For your glory When the sharpest word, gonna cut me down I'm gonna stay the flag, gonna drown them out I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be This is me, look out cause here I come 
And I'm marching on to the beat I drop I'm not scared to be seen I make no apologies Blessing me, oh
Wow, what an inspirational video. And we are going to take a short break right now, and we will be right back to discuss what we just saw. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha, y'all. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and I'm the host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We're on every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV to windmills to hydrogen, close to my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at 4 o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe and our special guest this afternoon, John Aieto, who is in charge of messaging to all Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders in the United States about the 2020 census. Welcome back, John. It was a great, very inspirational video. I, I, I need to start off with you telling us a little bit about the song, because obviously many of us have heard it before, and uh, we don't know quite where. <laughs> so, yeah, it was uh, part of a, a, Dis a Disney movie called The Greatest Showman, and it was actually sung by a local girl called Keala Seto. And uh, when we were looking for different songs, we were looking for an anthem that could resonate for all of our Pacific cousins. We found songs that were great in Hawaii or in the Hawaiian uh, ancestry, but not stuff that could resonate well with the Samoans and the Micronesians and the Tongans and the Tahitians. So we decided to go with an English song um, that sort of captured the essence of who we are. And the song, if you listen to the lyrics, it says, you know, we make no Apology. um, apologies for who we are, and this is who we are, and this is the way we dress, this is the way we dance, and this is our new home. We've come to America, the land of opportunity. Well, it's 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 great, it's great, and and I and how it and I noticed that in in the in the video, you. you the singers are located all across the United States, first of all. I mean, this was not something that was just done in Hawaii. Nei. I mean, this is something where um, people that of uh, Native Hawaiian and uh, Pacific Island ancestry actually can relate to on two levels. First of all, you know, their, their ancestry, and second, their uh, location. You know, what is... Why is that important? Why, why was so it? When we, when we went out to talk to our cousins that live in the continental USA, so much of what they shared with us was that all of the messaging that comes out for Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islanders was Hawaii focused and that they couldn't relate to it. So we wanted to create commercials and messaging where the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders on the continent could see themselves in the locations that they live in. And so that's why we went across the country. We shot it in everywhere from New York City, to San Diego, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and finding these iconic locations like Randy's Donuts in Los Angeles yeah. that all of us have seen <laughs> I... or passed by or driven by. I, I, you know, you either have to pick the donuts or the, uh, what's the name of the hot dog stand out there in Los Angeles? There's famous oh, yes, yes. Sunset Hot Dogs or something. And and I I, I, figured, I looked at that and I said, yeah, it, the donut, that was a good choice. So um, these people that were singing for you, they, they, they are, um, 
they are enthusiastic about what the messaging is and what is the message? I mean, ultimately, what do you want people from these various groups to do? Uh, uh, what do we have? We to want do? them to part. We want them to participate in the 2020 census. We want them to influence their own communities. So it was important for us to get performers from Micronesia and the Marshall Islands that they could talk to their uh, community and say, hey, let's participate in the census. It was important to get the Tongans and Samoans to do that and the native Hawaiians across not only the state, but the country to say, let's participate in the US census. Let's be counted. Let's participate in our governance. This is our country. You know, well, this is a little aside. This is just something I noticed, which I found, a, 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 you know, sort of a really quite good, cute, actually. And that is that I noticed that the people from uh, that from Samoan background or Tongan background, they would just say that, and some people from Hawaii. But the, there were a lot of people from Hawaii, which is typical here. You know, I am Samoan, Hawaiian, English, or something mm. like that. You know, you you could see that. I, I, and, and I know there must have been a policy decision to sort of do it like that uh, in the video. And I thought, you know, that is uniquely Hawaii. Uh, in he, Here in yeah. Hawaii, uh, you know, people like Elizabeth Warren wouldn't be criticized for saying I'm in, an Indian if I was only 1 16th, uh, or I'm a native Hawaiian if I was only 1 16th Hawaiian. So it, it was refreshing to see how you, you, you identified each culture, but at the same time you brought who they, who they were into the video right. itself. It, it's a, uh, so, you know, let me compliment you. And, and, and some will Thank you. The team, the team worked very hard on it. So I give them all, uh, all the kudos and compliments for Miles, Ruben and Don who shot the video over the 40 days with our team were just fantastic to work with. Now, and why? the entertainers, uh, the, the entertainers, entertainers that right. came out, Amy Gilliam, Raya Helm, Natalie Ai, um, oh, Jerome rate. Gray, all, all. I like Fancy Nancy standing on the, the water. Fancy Nancy, yes. The Hollywood, Hollywood sign. sign. She's, she's a really a talented young lady. There's so many, so much talent in this stuff. The, the the young lady at the uh, in th toward the end who is uh, you know she was I, I guess she must have been like in the Kahlo field, yeah. yes that's Sean Pimentel's daughter Sean Pimentel is a Hoku award winning producer and performer. Well, his daughter's uh, Sean, got a real future. Absolutely. absolutely. So absolutely. why why is it important that people get the message? Why is it important that they uh, make themselves available and? encourage their neighbors to participate in the census? Why is this message necessary? Well, we're trying to get a, a, an accurate count of our community and where we live and where the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders are. It is, the census is the number one tool that just decides where federal funding is spent. So they're the guys that fund the libraries, the fire stations, the hospitals, they're the ones that determine which, which schools have free breakfast and free lunch and which schools don't. And so the census is the baseline for all economic and social policies that the federal government runs through. It's also used by a lot of private companies and nonprofit organizations to fund programs in, in their community. Hawaiian Airlines who gave us the um, ability to travel amongst the North America by giving us miles and participating as a sponsor. We had a lot of conversations with them and they wanna know where the native Hawaiian Pacific community lives because they wanna be able to create and service routes for our community so they can come home. And as you know, Hawaiian Airlines flies, the only airlines that flies to Hawaii from, from the South Pacific and all over the uh, North American um, So a lot of policy continent. decisions will be made based on the census data. Now, one of the interesting Absolutely. things is that you would think that the important place to count uh, Pacific Islanders, including Native Hawaiians, would, would be a, 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 in their home, like uh, Samoans and American Samoa, 
or Marshallese in, uh, you know, uh, in the Marshall Islands or Hawaiians in Hawaii. Why is the census, uh, what is the census uh, going to show or why or whatever uh, it's doing in, in to count people all across the continent? So we're trying to count people where they're living now. And there's been a huge migration of Pacific Islanders, uh -huh. whether it's health care, jobs, education, um, and even global warming is creating a migration of our people to North America. So there's more Samoans in North America than in Samoa. There's more Tongans in North America than in Tonga, wow. more Micronesians. And for the first time, the pundits believe that there'll be more native Hawaiians with the 2020 census in the continent that's home in Hawaii. And that's gonna create a lot of policy discussions. About um, how we handle of, uh, programs for native Hawaiians. How we handle Pacific the programs Island. for our people. If, they're no, if the majority is no longer in the state of Hawaii, the state of Hawaii is gonna have a hard time being the trustee or housing, education, and health. Wow, that's, you know, that's a, that's a revolutionary thought. Now, you know, I, I'm sitting here thinking about it, and it occurred to me that they may, the census may find out if there was a way to track it, that there are probably more people living on the continent that were born in Hawaii uh, than live here at the moment. I mean, there, there's Absolutely. been this huge population shift that you alluded to. And, um, yes, and the, the research has shown that people born and raised in Hawaii are now the major, min, minority in their own home. And a lot of that is just the economy and the cost of living, housing. People are just feeling the crunch. The other thing that's happening is the households in Hawaii are so much smaller, significantly smaller than the households on the continent. And this is in regards to the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders. The Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders tend to have two children in the state of Hawaii. They tend to have five children in the continent. I wonder no what they're doing expensive. up there on the continent that we're not doing <laughs> here. Obviously, there's well, something. They, they have more space to have children. <laughs> there's there's well, right. more money to buy milk and so forth. Well, we, you know, John, our time is up, unfortunately. Thank you very much for uh, joining us this afternoon and presenting that message. and. Really, uh, my uh, kudos on the video. It, it was very, it's a very inspiring uh, use of a song and creating an anthem. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Join us again, thank everyone. Thank you, Hawaii. In two weeks, uh, we'll be back with another interesting guest.